Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm Watchaholic. Welcome to Horology Insanity. What is up, my watch friends? So, check this out. Today, as you can see with this white thing in front of us, I've got a quick unboxing video that I'm going to do. Now, this is... I don't know how it is for everybody else who films unboxing videos, but for me, this is a true unboxing in the sense that you are going to see on camera my first impressions of opening this watch. And I wanted to do that. I don't do that with all of my other watches, right? I, in fact, usually what happens is as they come in, I open them real quick and I just make sure like that the watch is inside or that it's the right watch. And then, because I have so many incoming and outgoing, um, I kind of pile them up and then once the mountain of incoming gets to be a certain size, then I go through and I film several unboxing videos and, uh, but this one, it's just this one and I want to open it immediately, but I want y'all to be able to see and hear my first impressions of this watch. And once I open it up here in a second, you might know why. So, um, with this, I, there was some massive like tape and whatnot on the outside. So I did take my knife and I ran it by this just so that I can get it open, but I've not opened it yet. And I'm going to take it off camera just real quick. And you're going to hear a bunch of noise because, um, I don't want to have my address and everything up on the screen, but here we go. Okay. In normal fashion, we got some packing. Stuff. And let's see if I can get this open here. You know, it's bubble wrapped inside of here, and it's kind of like the Christopher Ward boxes. If you're familiar with those, it's kind of long and narrow. So let's get that going and get this out of the way. Um, hopefully, I don't need my knife for this. So let's just tape. So let's get that. Okay. I can only imagine what that sounds like coming across the microphone. All right, let's get this flipped up. Get that out of the way. See if you can see that etching. If you're unfamiliar, this is by a company called Weiss Watch. And Weiss Watch is based in Los Angeles, California. And the owner and head watchmaker for Weiss Watch is Cameron Weiss. I first found out about him from the Watch and Listen podcast, and I, I watch and listen to their episodes on YouTube, even though you can probably get them in all kinds of different methods for which podcasts are gotten and listened to, right? I, I'm not into all of that. I don't, I don't really know how that works with the iTunes and stuff, but, um, but yeah, I watch their stuff on YouTube. And I'll put a link in the description below. There's two seasons of, of their podcast. But um, Cameron went, you know, to watchmaking school and he worked for Vacheron for a while. And if you're unfamiliar with Vacheron, right, they are, they're known to be in one of the Holy Trinity, uh, usually the way people call it. So Vacheron Constantine or Constantine. If y'all follow the channel, you know that I can't pronounce anything properly. So, um, anyway, just call it Vacheron. Vash no, if I can see, I can't even pronounce that. Vacheron? Yeah, people call it VC, right, for short. But anyway, so this is Weiss. He started up his own shop. So this, I would classify this as an independent. This is an independent. And in our case here, let's open this up. This is a new limited edition watch that he came out with and let's see here i don't know what's all this called okay that's my yeah, i'll look through that in a little bit uh, yeah official identification and uh yeah there's no i can show them here it is the american issue field watch ultralight and that's the cool part of it, the ultralight part, because this watch is made of titanium. Let's see if I can get this open here, get that out of the way. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, wow. So, 
All right. I, I'm going to, I'm going to let you all know. So one, I'm a watch nerd, right? I'm a huge watch nerd. I'm a nerd in general. Um, and, and not, you know, my Asperger's and OCD, that stuff probably just fuels my nerdiness even more. And so I've done my research on this watch, on, on Cameron, on their shop out in California. And, uh, and yet I'm, I'm even more kind of impressed with it in person than I have been in all of my research. This thing is absolutely amazing. handmade in the USA. So if you can see that, this is one of the reasons why I was so interested in it because not just the band, right? Which I'm, I'm guessing it probably is, but this, almost this entire watch, I think that he orders the jewels um, and those aren't necessarily made in house, but everything else to my knowledge is made, milled, assembled by Cameron himself, the master watchmaker, in their shop in Los Angeles. So let's see if I can get it on this dial. It's blue, by the way. I hope that's coming across in the camera. I know that with the lighting, the studio lights are bright and all the reflections that are going on. So it is a blue dial and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous D dark blue. And considering that it's kind of a flat dial, it's got a lot of depth just because of that color. So yeah, I don't know. Titanium, y'all know I love titanium watches. Um, I kind of want to spark it to life. Let's see. Doesn't have a screw down or does not have a screw down crown, right? Because it's a manual wind. And y'all know that I love some manual wind watches. My Zelo Sky Raider is probably one of my top favorites. Let's get that coming to life. Oh, there it goes. Okay, well, I could sit here and stare at this for I don't know how long and just kind of let the camera run and daze off into the brilliance and beauty that this absolutely stunning timepiece is. But um, no, we'll call it here. Go ahead and uh, keep an eye on the channel because I will be doing more videos with this and uh, kind of some reviews, some comparisons. And I am fairly certain I ordered this in the mindset that this was immediately going in the keeper box. And uh, yeah, it didn't disappoint. This is immediately going to the keeper box. So when I do my state of the collection videos and I try to determine what is a keeper and what's going to get flipped, this one will be in the keeper box. So yeah, Weiss watch the ultralight limited edition titanium, 100 pieces made. Man, that thing's amazing. All right, cool. Well, as always, I will end with uh, just a reminder that until we speak again, please remember what really matters and that that's not watches. Keep the insanity sane, my friends. What's up, my friends? All right, so check this out. Quick follow on video to the unboxing that I just did. Um, I got a question for you. So I, I was kind of inspecting this a little bit closer from, you know, it not being in front of the camera, right? So I could actually take a, a better look at it. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. But I, I've got a question and I'm curious if I should pursue it with their customer service or not. I, I'm not familiar with their customer service. I mean, I've reached out a couple of times via email and I think it was Whitney Cam Cameron's wife who was very helpful and responsive via email. But, um, but yeah, so I, I was just kind of giving it a once over and I'm curious to take a look at it under my loop, you know, the jeweler's loop. But I noticed two small things that I don't love and I don't know if it's just me being picky so the first one is on the case and let me see if i can zoom in and it may just be dust but right there i can't tell if that is you know improper finishing or if something 
made its way in between the case and the fixed bezel when it was being put together, but it is noticeable to the eye. And you'll notice the strap is a pretty snug fit, but yeah, right there where my fingernail is, it's really hard for me to point it out. But there's something there. So I'm gonna see what I can do about that. But here's the one that I was more so curious about. Let's go up here and you'll notice that we have this signed buckle. And right there is a giant chip out of the buckle. Now, some of you might look at that and go, oh, that's nothing. Well, let's be real. When you're spending three grand on a watch, right? What do you expect? I expect perfection. I know that if I spend $3,000 on a Grand Seiko, it's going to be perfect. So, yeah, I don't know how easy it is to get a replacement buckle. I'm assuming this will be handled under warranty. But, yeah, and I, and I don't think, I don't think it's a, from what I can tell, it's not like a covering or a coating. I don't think that's something that I need to peel off to be able to get to. The lights are really bright. But let me see if I can get that. Just right. You see that? Unless that's some sort of an etching that they meant to be there. And maybe I won't know it until I look at it under the jeweler's loop. But yeah, so just your thoughts. I, I mean, I'm not, I don't think that takes away from the amazingness of this watch, but I will say that with Cameron's background working at Vacheron, and he's talked about several times on his Watch and Listen podcast about how perfection was the standard, right? Perfection is the standard. And if you know me in any aspect of life, you will know that perfection and excellence is my standard, um, at least in everything that I do. So i um, curious what y'all think. Have you ever seen anything like this before? And would you pursue it with their customer service? And if you are part of, uh, you know, the Weiss community, and if you've ever had anything like this occur and you've had it handled, you know, what was that experience like? I would love to hear it down in the comments. So, yeah. Okay. Well, with that, I will give the reminder that I always do. Let's remember what really matters. And then that's not watches. Even in this case, when things go wrong and uh, you have to work it out. The things that do matter. I can do a whole other video talking about this, but people, people matter. Relationships matter. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. All right, my friends, we'll talk soon. Keep the insanity sane. And we're back. So um, here, I just want to do a quick update before I, before I call this one good. I've got good news and bad news, um, at least the way that I see it in this initial impression. So I just spent the last, I don't know, 10 minutes looking at this watch through my loop, just kind of checking everything out and double checking the two concerns that I had. So the good news is once I gave it a clean, it looks like there's nothing trapped between the case and the fixed bezel. And that was one of the concerns that I had, or I had a concern that the titanium, so titanium is known for getting scratched up or, or being easier to scratch. It's a softer metal. And I don't know if he's using any kind of a protective coating on these or not, but, um, but yeah, so I was a little concerned that maybe the titanium had, had taken a beating, but no, that all looks good now that I've gone on to that. So that's the good news. The bad, oh, and, and let me do more good news. Everything else on the watch seems okay. Everything else on the watch is, uh, you know, what, what I would expect. So at uh, this kind of price tier and uh, the claims kind of that are made. So that's good news. Now the bad news is, is that is legitimately a giant, like, I don't even know what you would call that, a nick. Um, I mean, that's, it's a big old hunk 
taken out of that. So, and it's funny when I looked at it under the loop, you can kind of see on this right side of the class, it's not coming across on camera, I don't think, but under the loop, you could see, I think people call them hairlines or, you know, whatever fractures, uh, stuff. You can see the right side of this case where something came up on that. And I'm guessing that's what took that off or it hit there, busted, and then fell on this right side to create the hairlines and other things that I'm seeing. So, um, it, the good news too, is it, I'm guessing it looks like this is a full polished stainless steel clasp. I'm guessing it's something that they use as a standard on all their watches. So this is easily replaceable. I'm hoping that within there, you know, it's just your standard pin to be able to get that out. So if they can send me another one that I can swap it out, but yeah, good news, bad news. And so now we will just see how the customer service process goes on and their warranty process. So based on everything I've experienced so far, I expect it to be good. Um, like I said, last time I, I talked to Whitney on email, she was super helpful. And, and I don't want to do this video in any way that just kind of trashes the brand or, you know, gives them an unfair, uh, you know, case. This, um, this stuff happens. So this stuff happens. And, and you hope that in your measures of QC that you can keep this stuff from making its way to the customer. Because if you can acknowledge that it happens and find it and resolve it before it gets sent out, then that's all the better. But that's also why you have warranties and customer service and things in place, because even to some of the best, this kind of stuff happens and it does make its way to the customer. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully now we'll just be able to get this resolved in a very quick, simple, painless way. That's my hope. Anyway, we'll talk soon. I'll keep you updated. Take care.